Yes, Father God, we come into total agreement today as a church, as a group of believers, whether online or here in this building, that we come under the same banner, and that banner that is Jesus Christ is Lord. Over all of these school districts, over every single one, That where there are believers placed in authority to be in each school, there you are in a banner of victory. That you would use these school districts as a way to reach many, many people. Many young men, many young ladies, many teachers, many administrators. That you would reach them, Lord, right where they are. And that you would raise up a standard against the enemy that would do as he would try to do and come in like a flood and try to, and try to destroy what the kingdom of God is doing. But we plead the blood of Jesus Christ over every single one of these school districts. We plead the blood over that it would run and it would flow and it would fill the halls and in and, and every one of the schools, in all of the classrooms, in all of the administrative buildings, in every school board meeting, that the blood would run and the Holy Spirit would flow. We pray, Holy Spirit, that you would come in like a flood. Lord, that you would raise up the believers that are there, but yet maybe they are full of fear. I ask God that you would would release faith, Lord, and courage, God, to each and every one. That you would release a spirit of wisdom upon all of the believers that whether they are teachers or administrators or students or faculty or staff or whoever, that you would release your presence upon them, that you would raise them up in favor and in strength. Lord God, we thank you for who you are and for what you're doing. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Come on, after praying 20 minutes, y'all ought to say amen louder than that. Amen. Amen. That's right. That's right. God is... Hey, I I know there are a lot of things that try to lord itself over us, but the last time I checked, God is still God. Jesus Christ is still our Savior. He's still our King. He is still Lord of Lords, and He is still King of Kings. He's still in control. He still is the one that has not only His hand, but His Spirit in each and every situation. And I know that He is on the move. I don't care what you heard. I don't care what you feel. I'm telling you... God is on the move. In the last 10 years in Arkansas alone, in this area alone, over 30,000 students have come to know Jesus Christ as their Savior. I'm done. Drop the mic, but I'd have to drop. (laughs) I'd have to take my shirt off. Y'all don't want that. God is on the move. Why do you think the enemy is working so hard? He's scared. (laughs) He's scared of what God is doing. And I'm thankful that we want to be a part of that. Amen? Amen. Thank you for praying. We're going to leave these up um, for a few weeks, maybe for the semester. I don't know. We're going to leave these up for a while. So if you're here or you're swinging by and you want to come in and pray or maybe next Sunday early or Wednesday night, whatever, here they are. Uh, we're going to be praying for each and every one of them. Um, I think that I think that uh, that would be a good thing for us as a church to do, to uphold each and every one. All right. Without further ado, Joshua, chapter one. Joshua, chapter one. We're going to start reading. At verse 1, we're going to read through verse 9. We're going to continue in with our Bible study called Crossing Over. Crossing Over and the premise is, is how, do we, how do we move from fear to faith? How do we move from doubt into knowing that God is doing it or 
not just knowing that God is doing it, but that he's calling us to do that right along with him. How do we move from wandering and, and wishing in the wilderness to actually stepping into a land of promise, a, a life of promise, a life that is flowing with milk and honey, a life that um, God has in store for us. Now, that doesn't mean that we're not going to go through some ups and some downs. Even whenever the children of Israel stepped into the promised land, there were still battles to fight. But what they learned in the wilderness was supposed to be a way for them to learn God was their provider and God was with them so that when they do fight their next battle in that land of promise, they recognize one thing first and foremost, that no matter if the battle has come to them or they have to go to the battle, either way, God is with them. And God says, I'll fight your battles. I will fight your battles. So moving, crossing over from, from, from fear to faith, if you want to look at it that way, we're crossing over. Last week we talked about 12 stones and building that memorial of remembering who God is. Remembering who God is, that God was the one that was walking with them, talking with them, keeping them, putting His presence with them, covering them by day and by night, feeding them every single morning and giving them water whenever they needed it from the rock in the desert. This week we're going to talk about... Uh, I'm going to come to you from the subject that says to cross over, you got to first go up, which I call this up and over. Before you're called to cross over, you're called to rise up. Joshua chapter 1, verses 1 through 9. After the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke to Joshua the son of Nun, Moses' assistant, saying, Moses, my servant is dead. Now therefore, arise. Go over this Jordan, you and all this people, to the land which I am giving to them, the children of Israel. Every place that the sole of your foot will tread upon, I have given you, as I said to Moses. From the wilderness and from this Lebanon, as far as the great river, the river Euphrates, all of the land of the Hittites, and to the great sea toward the going down of the sun shall be your territory. No man shall be able to stand before you all of the days of your life. For as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. I will not leave you nor forsake you. Be strong and of good courage. For to this people you shall divide as an inheritance the land which I swore to their fathers to give them. Only be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do according to all the law which my Moses servant commanded you. Do not turn from it to the right hand or to the left that you may prosper wherever you go. This book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Have I not commanded you? Be strong and of good courage. Do not be afraid, nor be dismayed. For the Lord your God is with you wherever you go. Father God, I know we have prayed a lot today. And that's a good thing. I'm thankful for a church that prays. I'm thankful for a group of men and women coming together that recognize the power in prayer. The power to uplift. The power to encourage. The power to walk through the storms of life. The power to, to call on peace when peace is needed. The power to put ourselves in the palm of hands that are so much bigger and so much greater than ourselves. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you are raising up a church, not just here, but all abroad. A, a church, Lord, to, 
to, to recognize its, its, own, its, its authority, its ownership as sons and daughters. The church, your calling to be the church. Father, forgive us where we fail you. Forgive us in our shortcomings. But I want to thank you, Lord, that by an amazing grace, you're raising up a generation a generation willing to take their rightful place in the land of promise. Father, let everything that I say not be in my own power or ability. May it be through your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. I've got about 20 minutes here, so... We'll cover as much as we can, and if we need to pick up next week, we will. Because this is a big one. This really is a big one, and I'd love to be a little more teachy and a little less preachy. I think you get yelled at enough. But, but I'd love to help you walk through the process of what all is going on here, and not just the mind and the mindset of Joshua, but also in the mind and the mindset of God. You know, God has a will, amen? He has a mind that is towards us. We learned uh, quite a bit about that Wednesday night. And God has a will, and it is His will to, to be involved in us and for us to be involved in His will. And His mind is towards us. His will is towards us. And so... I would like for you to know what all is going on also in the mind of God as best as we can. I'm not saying we can grasp it all because it would probably blow our mind if we could get quite a bit of it. But like the Apostle Paul who says, I pray that you know God in his fullness. How many of you would love to know God in his fullness? Fullness. All right. Four or five of us. Maybe six, seven, eight, nine. We're getting there. Can you imagine what that means? Can you imagine what Paul is saying about knowing God in his fullness? Whew, I'm just happy to get a little brush of his greatness. To know him in the fullness of his greatness is what we are certainly longing for Joshua let's pick up first with what's going on in the mindset of Joshua Joshua called to be a a leader in transition a leader in a shift a leader in a movement a leader in some some times that are looking different and and not quite the same as they used to be Isn't it amazing that no matter what or how hard it used to be, we're more comfortable with what used to be than what could be? Okay? For example, I know a lot of people who have come through many great things, depression and wars and all those kind of things, and they have told me, man, this stuff we're going through now scares me way more than all of that stuff did back then. What that tells me, number one, is it tells me that they were more comfortable now that they had seen that they could go through all of those things than facing something that they've never gone through before. And that's our comfort zone if we're not careful. No matter what it is, we've got to be very careful of our comfort zone. We've got to be very careful of what our mindset is and our perspective is. The same goes for those that have been set free out of jail. There's a good majority of those that end up going back because they're more comfortable with that. But there are those who say, "Uh uh-uh, I'm more comfortable with wherever God takes me and whatever God is doing in my life. Because I do know he is with me. And Joshua is now leading a group of people that were not now, that were not born in slavery, but they were born to eat the manna that God gave them every single day. How amazing would that? 
to know that your very first real meal once you got past the milk of mama was the manna God provided for you that morning. That's pretty good stuff. Knowing that the very first time you drank water could have quite possibly come from a rock. That God split open and miraculously made a way where there was no way. Imagine now Joshua leading a group of people raised under the mindset that God will provide. Joshua himself is in a big transition. Joshua himself is in a huge transition, moving from not just being military commander now to being commander and chief. Commander in chief of a few hundred thousand people. That would make me nervous. Joshua obviously is trying to to swallow this and grasp this and get, okay, God, what all is going on? And, And he is actually with God in a moment where it's just him and God, and he's mourning the loss of Moses just as everybody else is. And as he's mourning the loss of Moses, the one who... Who, who showed him the way, the one who first called him up to be a leader, the one who, who sowed into his life, the one who, who went before him and gave him mentorship and leadership, the one who took on the brunt and the weight and the burden of being between God and men, the one who talked with God and the one who met with God and then passed it down to men. And, and Joshua now is, is mourning that loss. Wondering if it is his real time. And it is often weird for me to realize that sometimes it takes a loss for us to grab for something more. Sometimes it takes that loss to shake us down to the reality of who we are so that we then begin to get a picture of who God is. Book of Isaiah starts off with, about five or six chapters in, starts off with Isaiah the prophet standing before God Almighty in His throne room. How many of you would like to do that? I say that, but I would probably mess myself up. How amazing that would be on one hand, but yet how scary that would be too. That's why Isaiah says, oh, woe is me. I don't even need to be here, right? But yet God raised him up and called him up and rose him up, raised him up. God raised him up to be a man of God. And it all started, the book all said it all started in the year that King Uzziah died. In the year that a good king passed away. And now the whole kingdom is like, great, what do we do now? Our country has been through a bit of that. We, we see a big change and a big shift happening. And we all as a country are thinking, what do we do now? Do we do this? Do we do that? Do we not do this? Do we not do that? Who do we believe? Boy, that's been a big, heavy question, isn't it? Who do you really believe? Do you believe doctor? Do you believe reporter? Do you believe this guy? Do you believe that lady? Do you believe the head of this? Do you believe the head of that? Do you believe this church? Do you believe that church? Do you... Here's what we first have to say. In the midst of this loss and this big shift, God is calling men and women now back into the prayer closet to know Him so personally that they themselves recognize the call on their life to rise up. Not to rise up with hatred or anger, but to rise up with spiritual authority that can look at a chaotic moment and say, Peace, peace, 
hold your peace. I don't care how loud the lion is roaring, hold your peace. See, that, that's why God called Joshua, because Joshua was someone who knew how to fight. For 40 years, he's been fighting. For 40 years, he's been leading. For 40 years, he knew how to swing a sword. For 40 years, he's been growing and growing and growing. For 40 years, he knew how to fight. He also knew how to lead others in a fight. God, I think, wants us to hear that He is calling His people. And the ones He's calling are those who know how to fight. Not in flesh and blood, because the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but they are mighty. To the pulling down of a stronghold. There are a lot of strongholds that we are up against right now. A lot of of obstacles we're facing. Oh, as a church leader, I get it. As a church leader, I hear it. I hear it in the the meetings. I hear it in the, the videos. I hear it in the radio reports. I hear it in talking with other pastors and leaders and ministers. I hear it. All the time. I've heard every single struggle. I've heard every single obstacle. I've heard every single what if. I've heard every single well, how are we going to's. I've heard every single this is going to be bad. I've heard every single well, no, this is going to be good. I've heard a lot of it. But what I want you to know is the biggest thing, our biggest obstacle is not in flesh and blood. Joshua's biggest obstacle was not Jericho. Joshua's biggest obstacle was not in trying to lead hundreds of thousands of people. Joshua's biggest obstacle was right here. The two and a half pounds between his ears. For some of you, it's a little more. For some of us, I'm going to leave that right there. <laughs> Joshua, that, that, that's your biggest battle, son. Can you hear God? Can you hear God just sitting down with Joshua, throwing his arm around him, saying, son, this is your biggest battle. Can I have a play on words here? This is not theologically the greatest in the world, but can I play on words for just a moment? Joshua, even God said, you're the son of none. (laughs) How's that work? Not the son of a none, which wouldn't work either. Right? But you're the son of none. (laughs) There could be a complex there. I'm a nobody. How am I going to be a somebody? I I don't know if I can. I don't know if I deserve this. I don't know if I can do this. I don't know if I can get past all the struggle. I don't know if I'm good enough. I don't know if I'm big enough. I don't know if I'm smart enough. I don't know if I'm great enough. I don't know if I can get this. I've led armies, but I've never led everybody politically. I've never, I've, I've never done what Moses, I can't feel Moses' sandals. He's a, he's a big guy. And here I am, the son of none. Now, I take that, I know that theologically what that means is is actually his dad's name was Nun. And his dad was a somewhat of a leader in the tribe of Ephraim. That's really all we know about him. We don't know a whole lot more about him. If we learn a little bit in 1 Chronicles, not very much. And all of a sudden, Joshua pops up. I have no idea how Joshua got to be son of none to being leader and commander. But I know this. The very first time Joshua comes onto the scene in a real life event, 
is found in a battle. The battle of, against the Amalekites. Where all of Israel was encamped at Rephidim. And as they were encamped, about to move to, to go to the mountain where they're about to have this glorious moment with the Ten Commandments and everything. And as they were encamped there, there was a general and a commander that said, they scare us, we don't like them. His name was Amalek. And he said, let's get all of our best warriors and let's go up against them and let's wipe them out because if we don't wipe them out, they may wipe us out. And so they tried to to wipe them out first. And this is where Moses calls Joshua and says, Joshua, get your strongest men and you go out there and fight. And I want you to learn that the battle is God's, not ours. But I need you to go and start fighting. And this is the same battle where Joshua and Moses are thinking, how are we going to do this? Joshua says, I- I've never done this before. I'm a slave boy. I'm born into the slave mentality how do I become this how do I do this and this is where Moses says hey let me give you a sign that God is with you I'm going to raise my arms and I'm going to raise my hands and as long as I raise my hands and keep them raised you're going to get the victory so can you imagine being that Joshua in your very first battle and you're swinging the sword, you're down, got you, and then you turn back and you look, okay, his hands are raised. Okay, and then you, and then you go back and you, uh-oh, they're getting a little bit lower. <laughs> oh, what do we do now? His hands are, he's getting tired. I can tell. What do we do? We're just going to keep fighting. We're going to keep trying. And then finally, Aaron and her raise the hands back up. The the, the, the main point is this. Joshua learned in his very first battle the importance, the power of spiritual warfare over physical warfare. He learned the power of praise. It's not by coincidence that we start our services off with praise and worship. It's not by coincidence that the enemy would do everything he can to get that off of our mind throughout the week. It's not by coincidence that when we leave these doors and we head on to the the, the job, the world, the life we are trying to create for ourselves, it's not by coincidence that it is a fight every day to remember to worship and praise in all things. What we learn Wednesday night, that this is the will of God, that you give thanks in some of the stuff that work out just right, (laughs) right? It's not what it says. You give God praise in everything. You give God thanks in everything. Joshua, this is how we fight our battles. This is how we have to get our minds set right. Because the enemy, that, that warfare happens between the two ears. Does anybody else struggle with this other than me? Okay, just, just a question. How many of you fight with yourself in what's going on up here? All right. Some of you raise your hand, the rest of you are just crazy. <laughs> right, that, that's where my biggest battle is too. It's, it's, it's right here. It's, it's not in here. It's, it's not in here. It's, it, it's, it's right here. And we have all the time something telling us, you can't make it, you can't do it. This is not going to work. This is not going to pan out. This is going to get bad. How many of you have ever heard this phrase? It's going to get worse before. Not only have some of us heard it, some of us have said it. Some of us have walked through that. And I get it. Sometimes it does get worse before it gets better. But you got two choices to focus on right there. Are you going to focus on the getting worse or are you going to focus on the getting better? 
Joshua's biggest battle was not Jericho. The most fortified battle he had to get with, he had to get victory over, was in his mind. Some of us, that's the only thing keeping us from crossing over. That's the only thing that keeps us from walking in the promises of God. There's a reason why God, with his arm around Joshua, says, not just once, not just twice, but three times. Be strong. Be courageous. Be strong. Be courageous. Be strong. Be courageous. I'm going to be with you, but I'm going to need you to be strong. I'm not going to leave you, but I still need you to be courageous. I need you to teach my people. I need you to go ahead of my people. And I need you to lead them in being and that is what your family needs. Not strong and courageous in your own strength, but strong and courageous in remembering that when you are fighting, somebody has his arms outstretched over you. That when you are in your daily grind, your daily battle, you have your arm, you have, there's someone else that has his arms outstretched over you. Someone else is standing up to give you an ovation, and that is Jesus Christ. How do I know that? Because if you fast forward all the way to the book of Acts and you see Stephen who's being strong and courageous to the point of being stoned, the Bible says he looks up into heaven and sees a grand vision of Jesus Christ, not just seated at the right hand of the Father, but actually standing up with His arms outstretched saying, be strong and courageous. You fight this battle and I'll give you a victory that will ripple effect and echo for generations to come. Jesus is with us. Oh, you're going to get all kinds of bad stuff. You're going to hear all kinds of bad reports. Hey, that's going to happen. How many of you heard of something bad this last week? Right. The rest of you are not watching the news or you're not listening to the radio. Right. We all go through these things. But it's in those moments that we say, okay, Let's be strong in this. Let's be courageous in this. Let's learn to walk with God in this. That's how God could give Joshua such a promise. Of every place the sole of your foot rests, I'm going to give you. Why could he give Joshua that promise? Because Joshua learned to walk in the footsteps of God. And he knew that it wasn't just him walking. It was God right there with him. I'm going to close. We're gonna, I'm going to take this one step further next week on how do we fight this battle even more so. But I want to leave with this very small story. It's a very small story of someone who had some pretty bad news and a bad thing happened to him, but he chose to use it to make him better. In 1919, Walt Disney was fired from Kansas City Star newspaper. The reason for his firing, according to his editor, and I quote, he lacked imagination and had no good ideas. He 
he went on to win 26 Oscars and created a business that raked in over $48 billion in 2014. So we have a choice of who to listen to. Oh, you're going to get, some, you're going to get stuff fired at you. But you have a choice of who to listen to. Now maybe for Walt Disney, I don't know, I was not in his head there. I was only about two years old at the time. Now I don't know, I wasn't there. But maybe this was the shake that he needed to go, wait a minute, I can do more than that. And he had to dig down and reach down deep and start the wheels turning. Now, if he could do that in a secular situation, what can you and I do with the presence of God on our side? Let's all stand. There are some things. We're going to go over Romans chapter 8. I didn't have time today, but we're going to go over Romans chapter 8 next week. When the scripture here tells Joshua, hey, learn to walk every step of the way in courage and in strength. You can look up in Romans chapter 8 and it defines very clearly what it means to walk after the Spirit and not after the flesh. We're going to go over all of those things. I'm going to get very teachy with you next week. Very practical next week. How to walk step by step after the Spirit and not after the flesh. I encourage you, go ahead and read Romans chapter 8. It's a wonderful passage. Wonderful passage about how to make this spiritual thing practical. First thing you've got to get is this. Do you believe it? Do you believe it? How many of you believe that even though the world is going to hell in a handbasket, you're going to be okay? How many of you believe that even though there's chaos out there, I can hold on to some peace right here? Because if you don't believe it, that's where we got to come back to first, a meeting between you and God. How many of you believe that even though you go through the fire, someone's walking with you? And even though you're called to walk out on the waves, Jesus' hand is outstretched. And even though you deal with a loss here or there, your loss is great in His hands. Amen? Amen. Father God, we believe. We believe. We believe. We believe. We believe, Lord. We believe. We believe that this world is spinning exactly the, the direction you have let it spin. And we believe that we are not facing this alone. We believe that this shift and this transition is going to shake the real church to rise up that this, this shaking is going to cause the real church to form together, to rise up, to be called up before we ever cross over. That we know that You, Lord, are walking with us. And we're going to learn to build our faith and our spiritual walk on Your truth. Father, now is the time for us to rise up. No matter what the news says, we rise up. We rise up. And if you believe it, say amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen.
Now, before you are dismissed, there is something I need to make sure everyone knows, and that is Pops over here has his birthday today. So today, he wish him happy 29th birthday, which makes me about 17, 18, right? (laughs) Happy birthday, Pops. God bless you. God bless you.